Hey, this is Dave Pryor. Welcome to a podcast on responsibility immersion. I think that's what we're calling it. Is that close enough, Christopher? Absolutely. All right. Um, I have a bunch of guests here today, and we're going to talk about the responsibility process and a new way you can go about learning about it. Um, this is something that has deeply, deeply impacted me. I, I, it has rewired my life, and I've been kind of working with it for a while. I have not yet gone all the way through one of these programs, but I'm a really big fan of Christopher's work and the way that it affects it affects me and it affects other people. So we've got a couple of guests in here. I'm going to ask, ask them to introduce themselves for a moment or in a moment. Um, and then we're going to talk through what the responsibility process is. We're going to talk about the immersion program that's coming up and how you can learn more about it before it starts if you're interested in that. Um, I promise you, though, if you head down this path, you have to be brave because there's some scary things along the way and it will change you much for the better, but it's definitely going to have an impact. So thank you all for being here. All right. Now, first, um, Christopher, would you mind introducing yourself and then introduce your two guests and we'll let them talk a little bit about their background? Absolutely. First, let me uh, acknowledge you, Dave. Thank you very much for your support now for many years and you're interested in, in this material. And thank you for this platform uh, to help uh, distribute, the, get the word out. I, I appreciate you. Um, so yeah, I'm Christopher Avery. For almost 30 years, I've been connected with uh, this material on responsibility thinking or responsibility consciousness. Uh, the, the poster child for all of these years is the responsibility process, which if you're listening and not watching this, I'm. I've got the responsibility process stack of words uh, on my virtual background behind me, and I'm pointing at it. So, um, so I've been connected with promoting the, this and experimenting with it on the front lines of leadership and coaching uh, all over the world uh, for years. And what the responsibility process is, is the first how-to approach for understanding how personal responsibility works in our minds, and therefore for practicing or taking responsibility for upsets in our lives uh, and overcoming them, facing them and overcoming them. And it's also the first how to approach for teaching personal responsibility. So for me, this has been a 30 year experiment in uh, understanding, taking and teaching. Uh, and it's, of course, become a, a life purpose, and I'm just thrilled that uh, I can make a living doing so. Cool. All right. Thank you. Um, Henning, would you like to go next? Yes, I can do that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Henning Wolf. I'm from Hamburg, Germany. Um, I uh, studied computer science and uh, was uh, introduced to extreme programming, I think, 20 years ago. So I'm uh, uh, now an agile consultant and trainer for Scrum and agile leadership and also for uh, responsibility immersion in German. Um, because uh, as Dave told uh, all of you, um, it also changed my life five years ago when I was introduced to the material and uh, uh, got to know this stuff better. All right, cool, thank you. And Patricia? Hi, I'm Patricia Sappenfield. Uh, I reside in Texas and I work for a university that recently tried to uh, switch to Agile a little bit. And in that, you know, I did some research on responsibility. I'm like, what is this thing? And a webinar popped up and Chris was on it and um, he helped me out. And I was like, I have got to learn more about this stuff. So he sent a link to his book and I bought the book. And I was like, I have no idea where I'm going with this book, uh, but it seems really great. And I decided to do the immersion class and um, I graduated just last year. And it has changed my life as well. Okay, so you've gone through this during, during COVID, during the pandemic. Yes. Okay, cool. Well, we're gonna definitely talk about that um, in a few minutes. And thank you for, for making time for this. Um, I'm curious to hear how you all would explain what this process is. Because for me, like when I, I, I try to think of how to explain to people, it fires off at different levels in my brain, and I'm never really sure where to start. Um, but you're all experts. So um, how would you explain what this is to people who are new to it? 
do you mean do you mean explain the responsibility process or yes what is the responsibility process okay <laughs> I'd, I'd love for Henning and Patricia to have to start. Yeah. Maybe Patricia first. Uh-oh. Pressure's on. Uh, not too much pressure. Uh, people have asked me about the class quite a bit uh, because I talk about it almost all the time. Well, in the responsibility class I take, this is what they say, you know, things like that. So um, to me, the process is a natural progression of when you find yourself upset, how do you move to the next level so that you can take back your power and gain clarity oh, wow. about a problem? Okay, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought about it in terms of power. That's great. Um, cool, okay. Henning, do you wanna add anything to that? Um, I think it's a cool explanation. Um, it's not the one I would choose, but however, um, but I think it's, it's, um, well, what would understand. you choose? What's, what's your take on it? Cause I want to yeah, offer I mine too and then ask Christopher. It's, for uh, it's a nice model that explains what's uh, going on in your mind when you are upset or have some kind of problem. And it ex explains, uh, the different mental states you can get into uh, on your way to own your problem and solve it in the mental state of responsibility. Okay, cool. I, I, I want to take a crack at it too. I always think of it as like a mechanism or a system for reframing what's in my head so that I can see it from a different angle. And, and that gives me more freedom. Like I have more choices. I can decide to stay where I am or not. But the, the bad thing about it, I always feel like it's important to explain to people, the really sucky thing about this is you totally lose the ability to be a victim of anything. And when I see these people, like they're making me do stuff, I always be like, you don't have to live that way. But I, sometimes that's easier to, to live that way. <laughs> it takes less effort. Um, well, Christopher, what's, how, how, what's your version? Yeah, well, first of all, let me acknowledge you're all you're all correct, uh, and uh, especially what you just said, Dave, which is that there's a lot of payoffs to, uh, for being a victim. Right, you get to be righteous. You actually get to be a victim. You get to have self pity. You get to earn pity of others. Um, you know, there's lots of payoffs to the ego, to the mind, to the brain for being a victim, which is, you know, sometimes people ask me, well, why doesn't everybody always take responsibility, right? And, and say, well, it's, you know, the truth is it requires some courage yeah. uh, to, to do so. So, so a couple of uh, things to set up my, my take on this. From the dawn of civilization, the talk about personal responsibility has always been that no matter what happens to you, you have the ability to respond. So there's all these pithy, inspirational quotes about it's not how many times you get knocked down in life, it's how many times you get up. And it's not what happens to you that's important, it's how you respond that's important. So it turns out that there is a psychology of responding. Right. And as Patricia said, it's a natural uh, mechanism in our minds. And the way it works is that every time something goes wrong, even tripping over a crack in the sidewalk, right, or spilling coffee down the front of you, or having that key individual not show up in that critical meeting, right, every time something goes wrong, our minds generate anxiety, upset, and the responsibility process gets triggered, and we enter the process uh, at the bottom in labeling. So. Every time something goes wrong, our first natural thought is who did this to me? So our first natural thought is being a victim. And we can get, and that's a, each of these is a mental state with its own cause effect logic. So that's the idea of reframing what you, know, what you mentioned or, or growing uh, that Henning mentioned. So in the cause effect logic of blame, if we, if we buy the idea that our mind hands us, right, it's your spouse's fault, right, then we can get stuck there and we can get stuck there for a minute or for the rest of our life. Uh, and we will operate according to the cause effect logic in that mental state around that problem. 
if we don't buy the logic in that mental state, um, which is the power of this that all three of you have alluded to, then we graduate up. So if I refuse to blame, then the next thing that'll happen is a bunch of justifies or excuses will come to my mind. If I refuse to justify, then the next thing that happens is I feel bad because the cause effect logic in, in that mental state is, well, you did this to yourself, dummy. It's your fault. And if I decide to quit beating myself up for being a mistake-making human, then I graduate to the next level, which is obligation, where I feel trapped in some promise or commitment to do something or be something I don't want to do or be. Um, and these two states, by the way, is where so many of our peers live. This is where smart, educated, quote, good, responsible people hang out. It's we're, we're conditioned to hang out in shame and obligation and think that we're taking responsibility. And only when we refuse to, to be trapped can we get to the mental state of responsibility. And in that mental state, we seem to have more magic available to us, more wisdom available to us. We seem to be far more powerful in overcoming this, this challenge. So that's the responsibility process. It's a discovery, it's a psychological discovery that's only about 30, maybe 35 years old at this time. So that, that um, kind of loosening the, of the bindings that are keeping you trapped is what gives you that extra power, I guess extra magic as you said is that you're asking me uh, yeah any of you yeah i'm just trying to figure out if i have it straight in my head when i ask questions so anybody <laughs> who wants to respond is welcome to <laughs> so so my response is yes the the responsibility process is signal okay right. so so when i get to know myself well enough to know when I'm stuck yeah. in one of these positions below the line, knowing that is simply signal. Okay. And then the, what to do about it is using three tools of consciousness that we teach, which is intention, awareness, and confront. Okay. So the signal is awareness. Oh, my mind is hanging out in justify. Right. Well, now that's useful for me to know. Because okay. then intention means free will. Once I realize this, then staying there is a choice. Right? Yeah. So, Which all, is okay to make that choice sometimes. Right. Staying, staying there is a choice. Right? And then confront. Confront means to face. So this is the scary part. So confront means I get to face what it is that I want about this problem that's got me stuck that'll help me get to responsibility where I can get smart enough or wise enough to be powerful enough to change it or accept it. Okay. And that releases the upset, that releases the anxiety. So the practice of doing this is a practice of, of taking uh, an anxiety cleansing bath all day, every day, and releasing anxiety before it builds up into big time stress. Well, do you ever find, I'm curious for any one of you that want to respond to this, and this is something I think about all the time. And Christopher, I know from our interaction that you're somebody that is still a practitioner of this. It's not like you you get this locked in and then it's like never a thing anymore. You, you're always working through these steps, but- You don't see me levitating? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'm curious, like, do any of you ever feel like, yeah, I am like a ball of anxious and going to hold this right now because that that's what I need to do with it? Because I, I find that that happens with me. Like I'll, the responsibility process for me is like in whatever state I'm in, there's like a door at the end of the hallway and I can choose to leave the hallway. And now I know that door is there. But sometimes I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to lock in for a little bit. Um, does that ever happen to any of you? Or am I just like bad at this? No, I, it happens to me most often when I'm tired. I, okay. I just get tired of being courageous and I get tired of oh. what's expected of me. Yeah. And so, um, I find that, okay, I'm anxious. I've got these thoughts. I'm going to write them down and I'll just deal with it later. Okay. You know? Yeah. And, and, and it kind of puts it on hold. Um, and the anxiety is still there. Sure. But, but you have I, a I, mechanism for working, for coping with it now. Right. Which well, is awesome. no, not coping, well, growing beyond it. That's, 
That's my hope is that I grow beyond those issues that I'm worried about. Okay. All right. What she's referring to is that we actually call each of these a coping mechanism. Yeah, I I was just thinking, okay. I was really thinking of it in terms of, um, I have a, a mechanism for response. Right. I have this thing. I know it's here. You said I'm going to write it down. I'm going to deal with it later. That is a technique to say there is a way to process this. Maybe this isn't the moment. Maybe I'm not strong enough in this moment to actually take this on, but it's here. And, and I know that, that, that it's there. And uh, for me, it's uh, totally normal to some sometimes, of course, uh, not being in the mental state of responsibility And uh, I think you better learn your triggers, your individual triggers. So for me, it's not being tired, but uh, not knowing what I want. Huh. That's normally when I'm when I get stuck. So I just have no idea what I really want, and then it's it's not so easy to have a clear intention, and so it's not so easy to get uh, into the mental state of responsibility, and then. Sometimes I, I just do what people ask me to do and it feels like obligation and like and that being trapped. Off. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it's All good right. to know that, that there's your trigger and because it, it gives you some, some idea wow. of what you can do to change it. Yeah. Okay. The, um, the, 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 issue, the issue is that our society conditions us to cope in, in these states. Yeah. So that's why... That's why what we finally figured out works is not a one or two day workshop, but an immersive experience where we actually can immerse someone in a culture of responsibility in our meetings, our events, in our mastery calls, in our Slack. They're participating in a culture of responsibility thinking that is, that is diametrically opposed to the culture of coping that they live in out in the world. I think that's an important thing because it's not, um, I feel like it's not for the faint of heart. It's not, I think not everybody, I've given your book to a bunch of people and I'm like, this changed my life. You really need to read this. And they're like, yeah, thanks. And every time I talk to them, they're like, the world sucks. It's beating me down. I'm like, you know, that book, you really need to read that book. Like, you mean I don't this time? Re- yeah. <laughs> I don't have time to read that book. I'm too busy being beaten down by the universe. I'm like, all right, fine. And then it's just, I don't know. It's like I, one of the first things that, that I picked up was like, you can't try to use this to fix other people. And I'm like, okay, but can I at least let them know that it's an option? Um, but it's hard. I think when you're stuck to see that maybe you can't change the fact that there's a pandemic and you're stuck in your house or whatever, but you can change what you do with that. And I think that's the thing that can be really powerful, but, but I think also really scary too, because then, then it's on you. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about the, the campaign that you're about to start, because there's an immersion program coming up that I want to talk about, but there's first the part where people can start to learn about this in a non-salesy way. So, yeah. So, yeah. So let's do that. Um, so immersion is a 20 week program and you go through it in a group uh, or what we in the U S call a cohort. I think, Germany, you call them groups. Is that right, honey? Yeah. And so we're about ready to start cohort five in September. And um, for people who are interested, what we do in terms of our marketing is we do a a no selling, no pressure, uh, totally content and value oriented, service oriented uh, approach to marketing where we develop a lot of great content and share it with people. So so they can self-qualify and so they can determine the fit of the product for themselves. And so uh, starting on the 3rd of August uh, of 2021 and continuing until the 18th of August, people can request a seven day email series called Responsibility Immersion, What, Why, and Who. And in that series, it's full of charts and graphs and and analysis and some stories uh, that Uh, sets up the before picture about who joins immersion and why and what are they seeking and what are the benefits that they think they're going to get uh, out of immersion. And then 
the after is, you know, what did they really get? Uh, and so we measured these things both right at the beginning of the 20 weeks and then right at the end uh, of the 20 weeks. And we now have enough data uh, to be able to share that. So I've just built this free email series for anybody that wants it um, to get, a, you know, 800 or 1,000 word a day email from me. So about a five minute read every day for seven days. Um, and no selling, no promotion. If they get to the end of the series and they think they might be a fit and want to hear more, uh, then they can click a link in the last email. Um, and we will include them in the group of people that, uh, that we send promotional materials to, okay. uh, which you know does have an offer to buy and get involved and get one of the 30 seats in immersion. Okay, and that's, I think that that's an important part of it, the fact that you're limiting it to 30. It's a, t it's a small group. They're gonna be working together for a while. Um, I was glad to see that because I feel like with the online groups when it gets too big, it gets a little bit harder to show up and really be open with people sometimes if you don't really get to know them. And this is a thing that's going to expose some vulnerability. I mean, you have to be brave enough to be vulnerable to participate in this, right? Well, yeah. you, if you can, want to get if you want to get value out of it. If you want to get value out of it, you want to put yourself on the hot seat and ask for some help. Okay. Because you want to, you want to realize you're stuck somewhere, right? And what smart, educated, good people in our society believe is that they just have to suck it up. <laughs> right? That's what we're taught. We just have to cope with yeah, whatever it is. It Right. Bad job, bad relationship, uh, health problem, whatever it is, we just have to deal with it. Um, and what this teaches us is that you can take ownership of anything and overcome it. Doesn't matter what it is. I just I just got an email from my friend David Dame. David Dame just switched jobs from being a head of software for a bank in Canada to being the head of uh, accessibility, the director of accessibility for Microsoft. Wow. David Dame has cerebral palsy. And David Dame has just spent the last year with a goal to do a 5K, to get out of his electric chair wow. and do a 5K. And he has transformed his body and dropped a bunch of weight and worked out. And you know he just looks so different. And as long as I've known him, his tagline has been, I have cerebral palsy but it doesn't have me. Oh, cool. Right? Yeah. So the idea of taking responsibility for anything is that you can either change it or you can come to a place of total acceptance and love around it. So does that, so does that mean then that there's going to be things where maybe it's, you know, a physical thing, or maybe it's some aspect of your life. That's not a physical, it's a choice. It's emotional, whatever. There's things you could change. Um, and, you may select to not change that thing at this point in time, but at least you're acknowledging that it's a choice that I've made. And that and so there's still power in being in a different state because you've made that choice. A classic one is someone in a job that they hate, right? but they really, really, really want the paycheck. Right. So, you know, I don't think Patricia or Henning or I, first of all, we never tell people what our solution is for them, okay. right? Because what taking responsibility in that situation looks like for you and for me and for Patricia and Henning could all be different, right? So what I would encourage them to do is to, you know, enjoy the paycheck and start creating a vision for what they want when yeah. they do change it. Yeah. Okay. But, or... I'm like, I, I know somebody um, who has a job that they hate and chooses to have that job because of the paycheck, because it provides for something else in their life. And so it serves a purpose and it's a, it's, that's the price you choose to pay, but it's a choice again. That's a choice. Right. Okay. Um, so Patricia or Henning, what would you add about what immersion is that I haven't said? Or the, the I guess we, or I guess you talked you asked me about the opportunity coming up about yeah. the about the email well let's talk about immersion though so so what is the pro what is the program or actually let's let's start in a different way if you don't mind patricia you've been through this 
So how did it change you? How are you different on the other side? Let's talk about the outcome first, because we're all agile. So it's all about outcomes. Um, outcome first, and then we'll talk about the program. Um, I, I can't even imagine where to start, um, except that it, when I first started uh, learning about responsibility, I, I felt like I was a mouse. And that was my role, was to be small and make myself small so that other people would feel comfortable around me. Wow. And I feel like this has transformed me so that I'm allowed to show my courage. I'm allowed to show all of my best qualities without being scared. And I feel like a lion. I feel like I'm allowed to roar. I feel like I'm allowed to speak up when I need to. I, for me, it has changed everything. I sold my house, bought a new one. I sold my car and got a truck. I went from a teeny tiny Fiat to a truck that could have eaten the Fiat. Um, I, there's just so many things. I, I started my own company. Um, you know, I've done so many things because I haven't let fear stop me because every time I, I was thinking about fear, I realized I was in the coping states. And yeah. all of that I learned through immersion. Um, And one of the things Christopher had mentioned is that, you know, needing courage to go on this path. And I think in the beginning, I didn't have any courage. I just knew that I couldn't stand my life anymore. And I wanted change. I wanted the change. And I I didn't know that I needed courage to go through the process. So, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to try this thing, you know, and see where it goes. Okay. And it gave it to me. So. And yeah. what about the cohort? Did that? How did that affect you when you went through? Yeah, so the cohort was great because um, in the beginning, you're like, oh, I don't know about these people. I don't know what I feel comfortable sharing. I don't know what I want to hold back. I'm like, are we going to share too much? You know, this is a lot of information yeah. that gets shared in the groups. Uh, but like by the third or fourth meeting, you feel like, oh, these are my best friends and I can't wait to go. You know, I learned something new. I learned something about the other people. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Cool. Okay. And you'd read the book before you signed up, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm curious if that, is that something that people need to do before they participate? Or are they going to learn the whole thing along the way? A- absolutely not. Um, it's, it's like the book skims the surface and what the practice does is put it into your life. Okay. I, and for me, that was just hard to translate from the pages of the book. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, my my introduction to it was through conversations with Christopher. And then I read the first time I read the book. I think I've read the book four or five times. But it's always the thing that like it just kind of pings back against an echo of something that reminds me like, oh, yeah, that thing. Um, it's helpful, but it, it doesn't lay everything out. It's the conversations, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's like you don't you don't become a, a great at yoga by reading yoga books you don't develop a great golf swing by reading golf books yeah you got to do the work yeah Yeah. and so immersion helps you do the work okay um penny you want to add anything to this you want to talk a little bit about how it works in germany or how how you've seen it impact people um yeah um i i think patricia said it uh said in a really cool example so (laughs) It, it's. Uh, I don't want to add to that, but uh, maybe I can uh, tell a bit uh, about the structure of immersion. Yes, that'd be great. The same in English or in German. Uh, so it consists of actually, I think, three different things. We have uh, eight core modules. So it's uh, learning more stuff, more models, uh, practices, and uh, ideas. Uh, in a way, it's the theory behind the whole stuff. Okay. And uh, then there are eight uh, questions and answers sessions. So where maybe after doing some of the homework, (laughs) um, you can um, ask questions, uh, getting to know more about it and dive deeper into the stuff. And then there are mastery sessions. And uh, that's where the real work uh, is happening. So like Christopher said, where people come up with uh, the problems where they are stuck, where they don't have what they want or when they have something they don't want. And uh, then um, Christopher or others are going to help them 
going through the process, using all those tools they learned about and mm -hmm. how how you can use them to uh, get to the mental state of responsibility again and knowing what you want and getting it. Okay. So what happens, I mean, people show up there, I'm imagining with, or at least what I remember from it, with all different kinds of things. Like some of them are, you know, pretty basic, like normal stuff. And sometimes they get kind of personal. Um, people, I guess, choose what they're willing to share. But then how, how does the group support them through that? I mean, it's not like a therapy session, right? So uh, I'll answer this. The what we do is we set up an environment of what I would call love. Okay. Yeah. And uh, anybody who is leading mastery is operating from a space of responsibility. And we agree that we're holding the space for 100% responsibility. Okay. And um, we do make early agreements uh, about managing your own psychological safety and about not, you know, not taking stuff out of context, not, you know, if you saw somebody do some interesting work in front of you about their relationship with their father. Right. You're not right. going to go tell people. Right. So the cool thing is that usually whoever's on the hot seat, the work they're doing is work that three or four or five or 10 of the other people on the call need to be doing too. So yeah. they're very grateful for being able to observe. And there's so many releases that happen during a mastery call where you actually visibly see somebody break through to what we call freedom, choice, and power that there's just a, there is a culture created very rapidly in those meetings of very high regard for each other and very high respect and realizing that every every human being is full of negative programming. That's all we call it. We just call it negative okay. programming that we get stuck in. Um, yeah, so just but, depend uh, the thing I was just trying to go after was the fact that there's a, an environment of acceptance. Yeah, it's absolutely. Not like we're here to fix you, but we're here. Like, you, I think you, when you said hold the space to me, that's like a really great way to describe it because it's a space where you can do whatever you got to do. And people there are, are going to help you figure out how to go buy the car or get the new, what is it, house, car, job, you know, all, that, all that stuff. Whatever it is, there's people there. And, and also, it's. And it's all done people. without advice. Awesome. Okay. Um, so that's going to start when? That starts on the 8th and registration opens at the 8th of September. Okay. And registration opens August 24th. So, so there's the period of getting the emails from the 3rd to the 18th, you can register. So if somebody registers on the 18th, they get to complete the seven day series before we open registration on the 24th of August. Okay. So the registration is from August 24th until we start on September 8th. All right. So I have one for Patricia and Henning, both of you. What advice do you have for people that are going to sign up for this, like <laughs> to get ready for it? Patricia, I guess if you don't mind going first. Well, I think it's funny that you asked for advice because the first thing we do is call it. <laughs> so when we call, we say, okay, I'm going to give you some advice, but you do realize that whatever I offer worked for me and it may not work for you. Okay. <laughs> so, so if you were going to tell the earlier version of you before you took the class, what are some things that you could say to yourself that might have eased your path as you went down it with this course? Number one would be take a few deep breaths. Okay. It's going to be okay. And, and number two would be, don't be afraid to speak up. Every, everybody's there working for you and with you and in a spirit of love. Okay. That's great. Um, Henning? Yeah. Um, I am a very uh, impatient. Uh, and so for me, uh, it, it was important to learn uh, uh, to go at, to, 
to use this uh, room between uh, stimulus and response. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, so the program has uh, a very cool pace, but it's not as fast as some of my Scrum Master uh, teachings are. <laughs> Uh, and I think it's it's a good thing, but it, it took me a while to to understand why it's so important for immersion that that you have time to process all the stuff you heard about and what it makes with uh, your part of uh, the human operating system in your brain. So okay, um, and uh, I, I think it took me four or five modules before I really. Uh, realize that it's not that, it, that it's good for me to have some time to reflect on it so, so it's, and okay. and uh, i think the the other thing um, um don't be so hard on yourself if if you okay. don't get it immediately and uh, just try as good as you can and then ask for help okay so I want to ask you about something specifically you just said, and this is this is maybe more directed towards anybody that's in coaching that is that is watching this. Um, you just described yourself as impatient, which you seem to me to be anything but. And one of the things I've commented to Christopher in the past is when I'm at conferences and I talk to people, I can pick out the people that have been through Christopher Singh. Like Ilker was one of the, the best examples. We were talking for like two minutes. I'm like, you've been through Christopher's program, haven't you? It's like these people have like a light coming out of them and they have a way of speaking that is so just patient and calm. Um, I'm curious about what, as a coach, right? And trainer, what what has changed in you as you've evolved through this stuff? Like, is there some mechanism that kind of tipped over and you were slightly different somehow? Uh, I think for me, it, it was really this uh, realization that there is a space between stimulus and response and I can choose my response. And if I want to choose my response wisely, I need at least two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not too hard to, uh, right. to think two seconds before you answer and uh, People will not run away. People don't think you are stupid or whatever. So, uh, and uh, it felt very useful for me to do so. I wonder if there's a, okay. I just wanted to build on that just briefly. So this is a lot of people have said this to me that like you are, are able to pick people out who are responsibility thinkers. And the reason is that they're very deliberate in their speech and you know what, what they have to say. And the reason they're very deliberate is because they've turned off the reaction, right? So most of us have created autopilot. So instead of stimulus response, it's stimulus react on autopilot. And th that's the mechanism that's tipped over. Yeah. Uh, and so we actually engage rather than react. Which is, that is, I guess that's the thing that I'm a little bit scared of that too. I want that, but I'm scared of it. Um, so this is really great. I, pre I appreciate all the work that all of you are doing. And I just want to say that. And Patricia, especially to you for, for sharing the stuff that you've shared and for going through this. Um, so if people want to learn more about this, Christopher, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? Yeah. Can I share a screen real quickly? Yeah. I'm going to have to turn that on. So give me one second. There you go. Now you can do it. Cool. So whenever you are watching or listening to this, you can go to responsibility.com forward slash immersion. We usually have a box at the top of the page that kind of gives context for what's going on right now. So this talks about the registration and the next 20 week session. You can even click to see the schedule to see if it fits your life. By the way, this is optimized for people who are in the Americas and in Europe, um, not yet very optimized for people in Asia. Although I have had people, I have had members from there that show up on our calls and it's one o'clock in the morning for them. Um, the other thing that I really recommend that you do is just get on our free responsibility community. Uh, and again, it's a no selling 100% content. You have to actually ask for us to send you promotional material. 
Um, and so that's at, uh, you can, from anywhere on our site, you can find the join button to sign up for the Responsibility Community newsletter. And, um, you know, you can find me on all the main social media. Well, for me, main means LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. <laughs> no TikTok <laughs> for you? No TikTok for me, sorry. <laughs> all right, cool. Thank you. Um, so, Henny, what if they want to get in touch with you or find out about your your programs or, or your scrum classes, like any of the stuff that you're doing? Um, yeah, uh, in, in Germany, uh, uh, you can use the domain selbstführen.de. So uh, I'll put it in the show notes. Leading, leading yourself first. Uh, okay. So in German. Yeah. And uh, you will find all on the classes we teach and also our immersion program. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, Patricia, what if people want to reach out and ask you questions about what you learned? Um, if they have questions, they can uh, check me out on Patricia underscore Saffenfield at Baylor.edu. Cool. All right. Well, thank you all very much. I appreciate you making time for this. And if you're watching, please go sign up for at least for the for the uh, information up front. Um, it's going to change your life in a very positive way. And I'm saying that as somebody whose life is changed by this stuff every day, because it's a mechanism that doesn't, once you, once you turn it on, it just keeps going. And it's always kind of like poking on the shoulder going, dude, pay attention. It is definitely a growth mindset. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank and you. thank you, Patricia and Henning. <laughs>